If you happen to visit Carbide 3D at various trade shows and conventions this year, you might see this 3D carved Ren shape piece laying around the booth. This scaled Moai figure is a demo piece we recently added to our repertoire, and today I'm going to show you how you can carve your own using the Nomad with a flip jig and mesh cam. Now, you can use any 3D model you want, but I picked this one off Thingiverse because although it's still an interesting shape, it doesn't have any overhangs when you look at it from the front or the back. I'll bring it into mesh cam, and here it doesn't really matter what size it is. We're going to have to scale it to fit within a 2x3x1-inch block of Ren shape, and that will be the first order of business right after we make sure our head is oriented in a flip jig friendly direction. I want the head pointed along the Y axis. Now we need to get the bounding box of the model to fit inside a 1x2x3-inch prism. I'll scale this model down until I have at least a sixteenth of an inch of margin all around my part. This will ensure that if my stock alignment isn't perfect, the model should still remain submerged within the boundaries of the stock. Next, I'll set my origin to the center of my part, this way the axis of rotation of my part when I flip it will go through the origin. I'll also set up my stock volume so that the moai is centered within it. Setting up the stock is important because that's how MeshCam knows what height it should start cutting from. We'll also want to set a max cutting depth. Our end mill shouldn't ever need to plunge a whole inch down, it only needs to go far enough to touch any surfaces that face upwards. In this case, I want to let the end mill go down to about 22mm so that I can hit the top of the ears with it. On the reverse side operation, the toolpath will overshoot slightly and cut into regions that are already machined, but it's a minor inefficiency that you can work around by exporting two versions of your toolpaths, one with deeper limits and one with shallow cuts only. Now, before we can make toolpaths for this part, we need a way to hold it, otherwise it'll fall out of our stock before it's finished. So I'm going to add some supports. I'm picking depths and locations to minimize my cleanup. The best places for support are on flat faces or fairly smooth geometry so that they'll be easy to cut off and sand flush. Now we can finally get to toolpathing. I'm going to opt to solely use an 8th inch ball end mill both for roughing and finishing to save a tool change. This will make machining the Moai ridiculously easy. I'm using 10,000 RPM for my spindle and some fairly conservative parameters to start with, knowing that I can always speed things up with feed rate override later. I'm using 10,000 stock to leave with a parallel finishing pass in one direction. The biggest driver of time here is my tiny finishing step over, but for a demo piece, I care more about appearance than efficiency. From here, we'll let MeshCam generate some toolpaths and then export the front and back facing operations as separate files. To set up my Nomad, I'll first load the flip jig with a block of Ren shape, making sure it's roughly centered front to back. If you load your stock in too far off center, then your Moai figure is going to either lose its chin or the back of its head. I'll secure my flip jig to the table, and officially I'm supposed to tell you to use all the bolts to hold it down, but cutting forces on Ren shape are so low that I'm only going to use one. Now to set our zero, I'm going to use one of the preset rapid positions, since they're calibrated to the machine table. Going to the middle of the machine, I know for a fact that it's aligned with the center of the flip jig in the Y axis, so I'll zero out Y here. Next, I'll jog over to what looks like a reasonable midpoint over the part and zero out my X axis. And finally, I'll touch off on the top of the flip jig, and since I know that the flip jig is 1.25 inches tall, I'll tell Carbide Motion that it's currently 5 eighths of an inch, or 15.875 millimeters, above where I want the zero to actually be set. Now I can run my first program. Beautiful. And then the second program after flipping the flip jig. Note that we're flipping the flip jig about the X axis. If you flip it the other way, you risk the X zero position moving left or right on you, and also your part will come out wrong. And that is the second operation done. All you have to do now is hack out your mini Moai, shave off the supports, and you have a two-sided part ready to go. So overall, this is a really simple part to run at trade shows and conventions, but also an effective demonstration of the Nomad with the flip jig. If you're interested in making things that require machining on both sides, I hope this video gives you a good idea of what the workflow in MeshCam looks like. Good luck and have fun machining your own projects.